Hi everyone, my name is Sabina Horner and I'm one of the few nutritionists in the world who tries to support bereaved people on this very challenging journey that is grief on a physical, mental and emotional level because our body and mind are very much connected and uh, it's my passion to share this with the world and especially bereaved people because like you seven years ago I wasn't aware of what grief does to our body and um, how to cope with grief or how I would cope with grief seven years ago yesterday my husband died of leukemia it was a traumatic experience um, again, something that's not uh, often acknowledged, that uh, death can be traumatic, watching somebody die, especially if it happens suddenly and unexpectedly. And although he died of leukemia, for me it was unexpected, because I was still fighting for his life. That aside, I take Kevin's anniversary always as a moment of reflection on the previous year in particular, but also on the length of time that has passed since his death, to reflect on my own journey and, and to realize how far I've come. So it, it's a really good opportunity to pause and to be proud of myself, of what I've been able to achieve and how much I've been able to grow. Now for some of you, the word growing from grief may not feel comfortable. You know, seeing something positive in something that so has, has such an, a negative impact on our lives. But I see Kevin's death as the moment when I really started to grow as a person. Because you have to. <laughs> you, you're chucked into grief and somehow you have to learn how to swim with tidal waves of grief. And if you don't learn and grow and find your own coping strategies, then you go under. It's as simple as that or you get stuck in grief. Now, I didn't want to get stuck in grief. I wanted to go through grief. Um, maybe not that consciously at first, because I didn't have a notion of how to cope with grief. I, again, I was like in anybody being thrown into this journey, a novice to grief. So I, I developed my own coping strategies and they've brought me to this moment in time. Seven years later, I'm a completely different person. And that's another thing that not many people realize. You're never going to be the same person ever again. And it's best to realize this early on so that you don't even try um, because we don't have much energy, at least at first, and it's better to put the energy somewhere where it's actually um, going to help us more than trying to become the old person again. So I'm a completely new Sabina. I'm, I'm still, you know, developing myself, growing as a person. And still changing uh, on a personal and on a professional level. Because what this journey did to me was to throw me on the path of supporting you. And not just myself. Although I'm also learning this on this journey. That you always have to put yourself first. Above everybody else. Because you can't help other people if you are not able to help yourself. A again, the word self-care and self-love may be a trigger for some people. They may have heard it so much that 
they don't really care about self-care anymore, hearing the word. But unfortunately, if we don't look after ourselves, who is going to look after you? Nobody. So you need to become your own carer. <laughs> Simple. Young carer, young healer. Because grief has a massive impact on our whole body, not just on this bit. And uh, we have to find ways to get out of this huge dip we are thrown into and find our way out of it. Or if you want another analogy to, you know, we are thrown into this deep tunnel, dark tunnel, and we have to find our way out into the light again. And it's a gradual process. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it takes stamina and above all, mental, emotional and physical resilience. So resilience is, is everything that makes us cope, able to cope with adversity better. So that's uh, something I've learned during the last seven years and that I've become better and better at to uh, become more resilient. So whenever life throws me another curveball, not that, that huge, but another one, um, you know, like financially or, um, you know, personally with my house or car or, you know, whatever happens or, I don't know, traveling, like can always be things happening, <laughs> then I am much better equipped to deal with any such situation. Well, to give you an example, because I mentioned car, I, I once found my car uh, with a, a lock <laughs> because I parked it illegally because parking laws had changed in Vienna and I was completely oblivious to that fact. <laughs> And, and I was supposed to fetch my daughter from the airport in three hours' time. So how do you deal with this situation? I managed to stay calm and resolve the situation and, and fetch my daughter in time. But that can really throw you, especially in the first year or years of your grieving journey. But the more you grow and the more you do for your resilience, to improve your resilience, um, the better you're going to cope with these sort of stresses <laughs> in your life. So this grief journey is full of challenges and I've learned so much again during the past year about why we find it so challenging and hard to change our habits because we develop a lot of unhelpful habits Unfortunately, when we are thrown into this journey, that's completely natural. And nobody expects it to be uh, perfect about how you cope with grief. As I said, we are all novices at the beginning of this journey and we all uh, need to find our own ways to cope with grief and find our and develop our own strategies to cope with grief. And there are strategies that can help us. And I've shared all the strategies and tips and um, ways in which we can change some of our unhelpful habits into more helpful ones to cope better with grief in my free email series, Embracing 52 Habits to Cope Better with Grief. So every week I share a tip, uh, I give you a suggestion of a habit that you can introduce into your daily routine that would help you cope better with grief. And I give you a sort of a week to try it out and see whether it fits into your daily routine or fits you as a person. And then uh, I suggest another one the following week. You don't have to follow this from week to week. You can make the gaps bigger. It's all up to you how you... Um, try to incorporate my ideas, suggestions, tips into your life. I just wanted to share 52 tips uh, in a year's time. But if you find it uh, easy and less overwhelming to try a habit change for a month and then move on to the next tip, that's uh, perfectly fine. 
So I, I'm trying to support you with all the knowledge and experience that I've gained. And this email series is completely free. You can dip into it. And if you don't find it helpful, you can dip out of it again. I actually divided the series into four parts. The first one is the basic, the, fund the foundations of things that can help us, you know, like why we seek out distractions to numb our pain, for example, uh, about the reasons why we find habit change difficult. There's many of them, not just a uh, few. And also uh, the concept of uh, incorporating a, a grief hour into our daily routine and breathing. I mean, I go on about breathing all the time, not just as a yoga therapist, but also as a, from my personal experience, I have realized these past two years that breathing is a, such a powerful tool and can help us so much if we just embrace it, um, you know, one step at a time, because first of all, we have to learn to breathe properly again after the first impact of grief because again it changes the way we breathe and then find ways in which we can adapt the breathing to different situations to cope better with anger and anxiety and generally with stress and, and improve our sleep through breathing techniques and so on and so forth. And the second part is about using the five senses better and also to cope with grief better, like doing specific eye exercises to release trauma in a very safe way without having to revisit it, using the sense of smell, aromatherapy, and also combining um, some of the senses like um, touch and smell, for example. And of course, using nature as the biggest healing force where we can just use all our senses to heal ourselves. The sound of birds and the smell of the leaves, the light, um, so the sight, um, light coming through the trees. And then I move into everything that can help us keep our blood sugar levels stable because that's one of the other things that I learned on my grief journey. If you eat irregularly and you don't eat fiber rich, um, very varied and balanced meals, then it's going to be harder for you to uh, deal with your emotions and uh, thoughts and your weight um, if you struggle with emotional eating and comfort eating and uh, brain fog and all the other so-called grief symptoms, which are not really grief symptoms, they are symptoms caused by emotional stress. And they're the same, exact same symptoms that anybody would experience if they were exposed to long-term high levels of stress. So just a suggestion, if you want to try these tips, you can subscribe on my website. It's www.sabinehorner.com forward slash 52 habits. That's where we, you can find more information and uh, there's also a community attached to it that you can join for free again because this whole email series has been funded by the national lottery in the uk and the, the community is there for you to share experiences and also your challenges and wins because another thing that i learned on this grieving journey is that community and sharing our experiences and challenges and wins is so important. So coming back to Kevin's anniversary and reflecting on how far I've come on this journey, I can tell you that the grief triggers, the, the moments that I'm triggered and have a, an unexpected grief wave hit me do become less often and do become less overwhelming and challenging and some of the moments where, you know, you realize that you've come further is when 
I, I know I'm no longer triggered when I come home from uh, being away uh, by, you know, coming home to my house. I'm no longer triggered when the sun shines and there's blue sky. Um, I, I, at first, during the first few years, uh, I, I hated good weather because when there was good weather, we would always go out and go hiking, cycling, or do some gardening together. That was a, a big trigger for me. And now I can enjoy being out in the sunshine again and just feel good uh, about being in the sunshine. And so all these triggers you will find will become less and less over the years and uh, you'll be better equipped of dealing with them. So these are just some reflections on how far I've come during the past seven years on the seventh anniversary of my husband's death. And I hope that some of my experiences and tips uh, and coping strategies will help you on your journey. So take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye.